Hello, my soccer universe. Well, I thought about making a Coppa Italia review video, but then, you know, it's Coppa Italia. Well, I'll take it on to the Serie A. So the only league that really played in this midweek where I think it's actually worth uh, spending some time is the Premier League. We had some quite interesting results and we had the same thing in the Eredivisie, although uh, disclaimer right up front, I did not see anything of the Eredivisie, but similar as in the Premier League, there were some results of teams that are further on the top uh, that are kind of dropping away and similar to the Premier League, it all points to one team taking the glory. We have, uh, let's we'll start with the headlines in the Premier League, we had probably a timid start in the Thomas Tuchel area for Chelsea. The big result, I think, is that last place Sheffield United beats first place Manchester United, um, which of course opens the door for a, a freely rolling Manchester City side to get in there. Maybe a slight lifeline uh, due to some odd results along the way. Um, this is speaking Leicester, Everton, uh, Aston Villa. Liverpool back on the winning ways and maybe that opens a little bit the door for them to get in their Spurs, of course, done. In the Netherlands, similarly, I mean, Ajax and PSV winning, but Vitesse with a shock loss and also AZ with a shock, shock loss and same goes Feyenoord. So, uh, and I'm not even sure if PSV can actually challenge Ajax for that title. Jump into the games. I spent some time watching highlights. I saw yesterday the... Um, yeah, it's early morning. I saw yesterday, yesterday the Liverpool uh, game. That is, and you know, I listened to a few things. Uh, we start off with a very lively London derby between Palace and West Ham, where Zaha gave uh, Palace an early lead, but then Suchek can equal it in the ninth. In the 25th, he gets the lead, and Suchek is in really, really good form. Probably the second best player after Michael Antonio, who should have had a hat trick, uh, but uh, twice hit the post. Once, the first time, right off the kickoff after the 2 1 through Suchek. Uh, then I think a second time, and then a third, third time, a great save by the Palace keeper. Dawson, the 65, puts the game away uh, for West Ham 3 1 in only stoppage time, but Jai pulls one back. Uh, Leeds United back to winning ways, uh, 2 1 over Newcastle United, and Newcastle, uh, it doesn't look good. Um, maybe surprising result, but what I forgot when I talked about the FA Cup is that Arsenal didn't play a full strength squad. Now they go to St. Mary's with a full strength squad, find themselves down after three minutes uh, to Southampton, but Nicolas Pepe can pull it back, and then Saka in the 39th gives Arsenal a 2 1 lead, and from that moment on, it's actually pretty much cruising for them. Like I said, adds a, um, a third goal. It was a from what I hear, an interesting game, but Arsenal deserve it. Windows there, and let's see where our Arsenal will go. West Brom, Manchester City. I mean, uh, that's everything that you thought about this game more or less happened. I mean, City steamrolling West Brom, and West Brom looking like the worst side in England, Manchester City look, looking like, like the best side. And the interesting thing about City, uh, they don't have De Bruyne, who is one of my favorite players in the whole of Premier League. The other one we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, he's injured. We have Aguero out in injured, and we have Gabriel Jesus not really there. And I always said uh, over the few last few months, um, they need to find a goal scorer. Well, they found it, but it comes from an unexpected source with Ilka Gunduan. And it's a typical Guardiola thing. Yeah, um, probably I want to field a side with all midfielders and we figure out how we score the goals. I think they have figured it out. So Gunduan in the sixth gets them off, the, uh, off to a good start. Then the second, Gambola well, can was a little bit, little bit unlucky because the assistant, she lifted the flag prematurely and the West Brom defenders. Uh, kind of stopped defending, but the referee hadn't blown the whistle. You always should play to the whistle, kind of like in American football and other games. So Cancelo scores the second goal, he stood. I think it would be much more of an outrage if there wasn't such a golf in core quality. And uh, before the half, uh, before the half, uh, CD added two more to Gunnar and Mares. So I think the result was never in doubt. Uh, Raheem Sterling, who actually I thought it was another source for goal scoring. No, not, but you know, here he scores the fifth goal. 
city really looking impressive and at this point as we will see it seems like an in inevitability that they will win the Premier League. Uh, a shock loss for Aston Villa. They took twice the lead through Watkins and Grealish and probably after the first half should have led by many more goals but within three minutes McNeil and Wood turn it around for Burnley and Burnley gets a shock 3-2 win for Aston Villa so uh, that's probably a downer for Aston Villa. Um, we had the first uh, Thomas Tuchel game. Almost was about to wear a Chelsea jersey for this one. But yeah, uh, I'm wearing Ajax, by the, by, by the way, because I didn't want to pull anyone down. Um, I have good news. Soon this CSC situation will be in such a way that I can pull a Premier League jersey on and can exchange up there. So I'm look happy about that. More jerseys coming and uh, two Premier League, two, maybe three Premier League jerseys coming relatively soon but yeah uh chelsea enormous amount of possession but without really penetration there was a good chance for wolves i think around the 70 where they hit the upside of the cro cross but chelsea probably would have deserved the win but you know uh one training session for uh thomas Tuchel. it will take a time uh if you are chelsea support i think again patience 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 it might not happen this year uh everton against leicester James Rodriguez gets Everton off to a good start. Uh, this was one, one, one of those games that I thought is a make and break for both teams in, in a way because Leicester won stay up there. That it ends 1-1 one, one kind of was the almost expected result, although I would have given a slight edge to Leicester. Uh, Tillemans giving them the equalizer. And so uh, splitting the spoils, but that also means that Leicester maybe missed a little bit of chance to really solidify themselves for the Champions League spots. And then uh, the two biggest results of the weekend. I mean, that United loses to Sheffield United, Manchester United to Sheffield United. Here in this case, saying United, although it's pretty clear who I should talk about, is uh, a shock. It's an absolute shock. Uh, that I didn't expect. We have. I've been slowly coming around to lauding Manchester United for the good performances and now such a stinker. An absolute stinker. And uh, if you see the goals, I mean, I... Admittedly, I didn't see much of uh, of the game except some highlights and all about here. But the, the defending on both goals is rather rather poor. I mean, Maguire's e equalizer. Yeah, I thought at that point. I mean, I did not watch the game. I watched at the same time Lusk, and uh, I I was just fall falling a little bit. And honestly, I really thought that Maguire, when he made the e equalizer, the United will turn around. No. But some really shoddy defending and Burke gets the win for Sheffield United. I thought the Jersey manager was also weird in that one. But that came a little bit out of nowhere. And as I said, this is one of those shocker cells that will put eventually everything for Manchester City. And then a very entertaining game between Spurs and Liverpool. I mean, both halves of the get-go, many chances. I think uh, Mane, who was probably the player of the game, should have scored in the sec second minute. Then Son, uh, Son, the other, my other favorite, favorite, favorite player to watch in the Premier League, gets a goal, but there was an offside before, uh, which was one of those that, yeah, I know the letter of the law, it's good. I personally don't like it. I thought that Spurs actually had a good plan to combat Liverpool, although Liverpool definitely had more of the game and Mane was working the defense constantly and you could see there, uh, exploiting the weaknesses, but it was, uh, from, from Liverpool, I always thought it was mostly Mane uh, wor working there as long as Kane stayed in there, there was always a constant threat that Spurs might do something with Kane and Son. However, Kane got injured. And I think that took, A, this will mean bad things for Spurs going forward, and that took a little bit of light, life out, out of Spurs as well. And then defending, I mean, the first goal, um, Yes, a great ball by Henderson to Mane, who uh, with the controls with the chest, I am place it right between um, Hugo Yoris and Eric Dyer. I still think there needs to be some communication that either Dyer completely takes out Firmino or something else. It cannot be that Firmino then suddenly is free uh, there on goal. It's one nil before the half. After the half, Liverpool again outstorming uh, should. Um, should have already been in the 46th that there uh, is a goal score for Liverpool. It came then in the 47th uh, when, again, I, I think it was bad goalkeeping. Uh, yes, it was raining like crazy, but again, Juris, don't punch. You know, it was more like a volleyball move. Gives it directly to our, our Alexander-Arnold. 
who gets his first goal off of the season. Basically puts himself, uh, he, from that moment on, he suddenly played really good again. However, two minutes later, Heuberg with a great shot makes it 1-2 and I thought maybe Spurs can be coming, but you know, you had Bergwijn and so it did not work. The, the linchpin with Kane was, was missing. Son was suddenly not present in the game and, and anymore. And from that moment on, it was actually only Liverpool. I think Liverpool was really struggling for half an hour. But with that Kane injury, I thought, yeah, Liverpool is getting back in, in, into the game and then it could have been even more. I mean, Salah had a goal disallowed because Firmino played it at the center line with the hand. Uh, and then Mane just, it was in 56th and 65th, uh, Alexander Arnold with a great assist. Again, uh, the defending what the Roden is trying to do uh, with that cross from Alexander Ar Arnold. And again, Mane just there, free can, uh, I mean, he slammed it in. That killed the game. Uh, also, Bale coming on late. Doesn't look good for Bale. So yeah, I, it it was a deserved win for Liverpool. Uh, but I have, I have to say, if I would have liked to see Kane being fit, and I think Kane will, will be out, and that means Spurs oops, will go down if that is really the case. So in the standings, we have now Manchester City on top of the table. I think maybe for the first time, at least in a long time, uh, that they are up there with uh, having so, so, so many games uh, to catch up with. So I think it's the first time we see Man Manchester City ahead of United, 77% of making the title. We also see the only two containers are Liverpool and uh, United, and they have 11 at 8. Doesn't look good. It looks pretty decent for Leicester City at the moment to finish in the top four, which is something they would uh, deserve. West Ham is in fifth. Spurs dropping, Everton dropping. Chelsea and Arsenal move, moving up, but you see it's a rather, rather tight. And will Sheffield United make an escape? We have to see. I mean, that, that, that was a big win. They have not been right racking up the wins. I actually could see them not finishing last. I think West Brom will uh, finish that last. Brighton and Newcastle need to watch out. Definitely. Uh, adjusting the table, uh, we see that Everton is still in fifth uh, and West, West Ham goes down. Aston Villa also with games in hand is of course a little bit further up as is Southampton. So the other two London Giants will actually drop down there. And as looking for the expected standings, City, 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 City. City uh, is going to win this league comfortably if things continue like that. Um, look at how Highly Chelsea is rated, this means they are still in top six con uh, con con conversation, but we have to see how it, how, it, how it will go. Also Spurs at the moment still in fifth. As for re relegation, uh, nothing re really changed. I think it's between Newcastle and Fulham for the last spot. Uh, on the weekend, we have West Ham Liverpool, an interesting game. We have, of course, Arsenal United. This will be one where I think United, this, it's a must win for United and a little bit also for Arsenal because our, our Arsenal probably want to also go back into European spots. Uh, some eyes will be definitely on Thomas Tuchel now having a little, few more training sessions, how they will uh, perform against Burnley. In the Netherlands, also a Weird slate of results. I mean that PSV is beating Emmen is was was to be expected, although that the goals came late through Mauro Juni in the 81st and Sahavi in the 88th. But then look at that losing to Utrecht. Venlo 0-13 to Ajax, beating Vitesse, who were right up there. 4-1. That's a huge uh, result. Herrenveen, 3-0 over Feyenoord. Another huge one. So uh Vitesse and Feyenoord out of the title race, I, I, I would say with that. And then Ajax also having a little bit of trouble against Willem Dwey, but Klassen gives them the lead, uh, Bavridis can equalize and then lay it on, similar to PSV, they score two goals through Broby and Tadic. Ajax get the win, comfortable on top of the table, I mean, even 90, 91%, PSV maybe have, have, having a chance, I don't. I think Vitesse and Alzet will not get back in there again, um, and expected standings, I mean, Ajax will win this with nine points on average, PSV will finish in second, and then we have to see how the chase goes for the European spot. We have a huge weekend, uh, at least name-wise, Feyenoord against PSV doesn't seem like that great anymore since PSV now, uh, Feyenoord has been losing now consistently. And for AZ, it's basically uh, make it or break it. If AZ beats Ajax, then maybe, maybe we have a title race. But I, this almost seems like the last chance of doing so.
So that was it for me from uh, Northwestern Europe. If you would like Premier League and, and, and the Netherlands, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Please drop a line because I didn't see as many things. I gave you just my thoughts from what I've observed. But you know, if you want to add something about the games in specific, please drop a line below. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!